right, Citizen Chauvelin? Not entirely. I'll never return to save them. Who do you mean? The Scarlet Pimpernel, of course. What did you say about the Scarlet Pimpernel? Oh, oh nothing. I, I, I just said that he would never return. You took good care of that, Citizen Chauvelin. And I'll still take good care that no enemies of Citizen Robespierre escape their just punishment. Long live Robespierre! Take them away. Officer Percy. <laughs> Do look at Percy. Did you ever see anybody enjoy a game as he does? Never. That demon bowler of theirs has no terrors for him. But you know, if Percy does a thing at all, he always does it better than anybody else. <laughs> at cricket, he's a schoolboy. At court, the most brainless fop that ever looked through a quizzing glass. And in Paris, the brainiest bravest opponent that Robespierre ever had. But he takes terrible risks. Yes, but he knows how to take them and when to take them, just as he does at cricket. By gad, they've got him. Oh, Andrew, Percy must never be allowed to go back to Paris again. Why, is he thinking of it? Yes. What makes you say that? I know the sign. He was singing Auprès de ma Blonde in his bath this morning. <laughs> I suppose that proves it. It shows that his mind is on Paris. Promise me you won't let him go. Now, what can I do to stop him? You know what he is. Yes, but it's all different now. They know him now. They know that he's the Scarlet Pimpernel. The man who has defied the terror and cheated the guillotine again and again. Now, don't you go telling him that, or he'll be off tomorrow morning. A dangerous meet and drink to him. Playing with death a game. Just like cricket. How do we stand? 32 ahead, Sir Percy, and five wickets in hand. Here's oh. the prince. Please, 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 gentlemen. Well, Percy, shall we be beaten? Are we, sir? Uh, whose side are you on? Uh, Why, well, yours, of course. That was a foul, sir! What do you mean, sir, a foul? Well done, Percy. Were well, you pleased with me, darling? And proud. Angel. I must admit it feels tolerably good to be back in peaceful old England for a while. Only for a while? Well, that depends on what news I get from Paris. Percy, you're not going to leave me again? God knows I don't want to, sweetheart. I have a reason for asking. A woman's reason? Or is it a big reason? A woman's reason. And a very little reason. Darling. Percy, they're looking. Well, what do we care? Cricketers aren't born every day. <laughs> now, sir, where is the one word in those rules to show that that ball was illegal? That's not the point, sir. A thing may be perfectly legal, but most emphatically not cricket. Sure, sure. What's the verdict, umpire? Not out, sir. I agree. Yeah, yeah, that's that's right. right. That settles him. <laughs> Come on, everybody, let's get on to the game. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Here are other names, Citizen Robespierre.
Oh, citizen Chauvelin. Citizen de Calmet. I have an appointment with Citizen Robespierre. Ah, yes. Just a moment, citizen. I'll announce you. Right, sir. Citizen Robespierre will receive you. Thank you. You sent for me, I think? I did. Why? Because I'm extremely dissatisfied. With what? With the deplorable lack of zeal shown in the conduct of your department. For example? I have before me a list of the disaffected, of those who presume to set themselves against the principles which I have laid down for the future government of this country and of mankind. One of which is liberty. You think too many people are still enjoying it? I think there are too many traitors in our midst. I think they are receiving encouragement from the fact that they are constantly slipping through your fingers, that they are unaccountably being rescued by this English aristocrat. The Scarlet Pimpernel. Whom I've driven out of France. Driven out? Allowed to escape. His secret adherents are still among us. His poison is working. His bribes are accepted, I swear, by men at my very elbow. But if you, Citizen Robespierre, with your superhuman intelligence, fail to detect traitors at your elbow, how can you expect me to do so? Get the Pimpernel! Without him, the rest will be sheep without a shepherd. But he's in England. What can I do? Your head or his. That's the penalty. What's the reward? That you are alive to claim it. Well, I must be off and set my traps. By the way, what do you think of Talia? Talia? I suspect him of being one of the men at my elbow. And that um, actress woman he's in love with? Theresia Cabarrus? Yes. Clever. Fascinating. An attractive bait. To catch a man who is notoriously in love with his wife? No. To catch the wife. What is it, dearest? You're worried. Robespierre. He's preparing another purge of the convention. Not you. No. Not yet. But he sent ten members to the Guild today. Every eye in the convention will turn to me with the mute question, are you going to save his victims? Have you got the courage to face him? Don't. Oh, I won't. Daren't. But you will. When the time comes to strike, I'll tell you. He doesn't suspect you. He suspects everybody. At the merest hint of opposition, he becomes as deadly as a scorpion. To criticize Robespierre is to flirt with death. Then show your loyalty. Flatter him. Our time will come. It will. Citizen Chauvelin. This is an unexpected honor, Citizen Chauvelin. Say, pleasure, Senorita. And make your humblest adorer happy for a week. Has the busiest man in France time for such thoughts? Alas, only in connection with business. What business can you possibly have with Senorita Caparus? If I might humbly beg ten minutes of your time, I'd find it to your advantage. And quite possibly to his. I think perhaps I'd better listen to what Citizen Chauvelin has to say, Jean. Oh, believe me, it's wise. Ten little minutes in the service of the government. What is that to one of Citizen Robespierre's most zealous adherents? Very well. Goodbye.
Senorita, your position in Paris at the moment is a little mm -hmm. delicate. Why, my papers are in order? Oh, doubtless, doubtless. Nevertheless, you're a foreigner, and in some quarters your presence has been the subject of suspicion. Are we under a cloud? Oh, that. A few wisps of uh, vapour, shall we say, are easily dispelled. Easily. How? By undertaking a mission of importance to the government for which you're admirably fitted, both by your talents as an actress and your beauty as a woman. What do you want me to do? You've heard, perhaps, of the Scarlet Pimpernel. Everyone has. If you can help me to secure his capture, you and your friends are safe forever. Where can I find him? I'll tell you. In England, there's a town called Brighton. Thank you, senorita. Entrancing. Yes, one doesn't expect to find genius and beauty in the same person. Eh, Sheridan? No, sir. Apart from Colonel Winterbottom. Oh, I never had genius. Pum, 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 pum. Charming. <laughs> what is it called? Oh, Fred de ma Blonde. Oh, one of those French things. Oh, it's the craze of the moment in France. It's his feet at work at play everywhere. Oh, yes. Percy brought it back from Paris with him. It's his favorite song. Is it out of something? Out of tune when Percy sings it. <laughs> <laughs> and now I think we ought to inspect for Pipkin's wonderful uh, invention. Pipkin? Yes, Pipkin's famous phantasmagoria. Phantasma what, sir? Uh, what does that mean? Uh, well, it means, uh, it means, uh... Do you mean to tell me you don't know? No, sir. Uh, what does it mean? Well, phantasmagoria are, uh, well, it's a common enough word meaning, uh, meaning, uh, phantasmagoria. Exactly, sir, but uh, what does it mean? I've told you, Demi, sir, don't bother me with your cursed riddles. Uh, one might call it moving pictures. Yes, or pictures that uh, move. <laughs> now, come on. Lady Blakeney, you're a French woman. You know what it means to be a refugee from the terror? I do indeed. What's that cabarrous woman doing here? Remember the prince, is she? Is she? Last time I saw her, she was a friend of the revolution. Now, apparently, she's a friend of my wife. She's an intriguing creature. Yes, that's the word, Hastings. Intriguing. My situation is desperate. I must see the prime minister in London. I need influential friends everywhere. Perhaps your husband. Oh, yes, sir. I'm sure he'd be glad to help. You know anything about this professor? <laughs> Only that he's invented something I can't pronounce? Why? I have a feeling I've seen him before somewhere. Not in England. See what you can find out about him. I'll try. Good. Go ahead. But don't forget, we'll leave for Rottingdean in quarter of an hour. Of course. Percy, Senorita Cabarrus is seeking refuge from the terror. She wondered whether she could come to you for help and advice. I said, of course she could. Oh, hi, then, of course she can. She's in a desperate situation. You must hear her story. Your wife is a French woman. She knows what it means to tremble for those we love. <laughs> Does she, though? She's the only one here who can understand the agony of a woman's heart. A stranger in a strange land. Oh, dear, dear, what a sad state of affairs. Uh, how can I help? Tell him, senorita. Just listen to her story. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, Pray take your places for the cotillon. 
Take her on to the terrace. Oh, but my dear, I must go on to this meeting. Afterwards. Hear her first. <laughs> Very well. And now, senorita, uh, pray tell me, why come to me? I seem to remember you having more powerful friends than any woman in Paris. Who, for example? Citizen Robespierre. Who suspects me? Citizen Chauvelin. Who warned me that Paris is no longer safe for me? Uh, Citizen Talian. On whose behalf I come to beg your aid? Aid in what, senorita? Against the terror. But, Ked, he helped to put it there. No. He revolted against the tyranny of the old regime, but this bloodshed sickens him. This dictatorship appalls him, as it does me, as it does you. Oh, Stanley, don't drag me into it, senorita. Oh, you can drop your mask, Sir Percy. I know you for what you are. The gallant rescuer of the oppressed, the Scarlet Pimpernel. Sink me? Who ever told you that? Why, it's common knowledge all over Paris. Oh. Oh, well, that's devilish awkward. If I were to go back, someone might do me an injury. You do yourself an injury when you take on that tone. How can you jest when Talian's life is in your hands? Talian, the one man in France who, with your help, might defy Robespierre and end the terror. Must he stand alone? Senorita, there is the best of all reasons why I cannot return to France. What reason? I have promised my wife. But does she realize how desperately we need you there? She does, but uh, she seems to need me too. Forgive me, Percy, but it's time we left. I'm so sorry, senorita. Nothing will cure us all. I never break a promise to a woman. Goodbye, senorita. Let us say au revoir. Thank you for all your kindness, Lady Blakeney. I'm very happy. Senorita, may I uh, crave the pleasure of the next dance? I shall be charmed, Colonel. <laughs> I've asked that poor woman to come back with me tonight. To Blakeney Manor? What are the four? She's so friendly. And perhaps I can help her to see the Prime Minister tomorrow. Is anything wrong? No. As long as you don't believe a single word she says. Percy! Not one word, is that clear? Yes, but... There's no but. Now, take care of yourself, sweetheart, and expect me back early tomorrow. Come on, Hastings. Good night, Fibery. Mind if I leave you behind, Hastings? Whatever for? To see Marguerite safely home. Why, is there any danger? I don't know. I don't much like these senoritas and professors. Nor this sudden friendship. Very well, Percy. By the way, all I could find out about our phantasmagorian friend is that he speaks fluent French. I heard him talking to one of his assistants. Yes? Well, don't let Marguerite out of your sight. I won't. Good night, Percy. Good night. Tell them at Rottingdean why I'm not there. Good night. It's not without a struggle that I've come to this decision. It breaks my heart to have to give up the task which we've all risked our lives again and again to accomplish. The rescue of the innocent and helpless from the clutches of the terror. But I promised my wife that I won't return to Paris for at least a year. And, well, you all know why. Quite right, Percy. It's only fair to Marguerite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank heaven we've established a very efficient organization on the other side of the channel. And although I can't be with you in person, I can still help to plan our raids and direct our operations. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not easy work that I'm asking you to do, nor is it very safe. There's a price on all our heads. But it's work that you can be proud of, and that I know I can depend on every one of you to... Bravo! Bravo, Bravo. Percy! Bravo. The League of the Scarlet Pimpernel. The League! The League. Here's a health unto His Majesty. Here's a health unto His Majesty. With a la 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 Confusion to His enemies. With a la 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 And he who will not pledge his health, I wish him neither wit nor wealth, nor yet a rope to hang himself. With a la 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 la
king. The king! Sir Giles Trevor's carriage. Lady Blakeness and the Senorita's carriages. But you're coming back with me. I was, yes. But if you'll excuse me, I... But don't you want to see the Prime Minister tomorrow? It's no longer necessary. Why not? I've made, well, other arrangements. My anxieties have all been lightened, thanks to you, dear Lady Blakeney. I shall never forget your kindness. Never. Good night. Good night, Lord Hastings. You see what that means, don't you? Percy's going back to Paris. Nonsense. He promised you. Yes, but you know he can never resist an appeal. He's promised her. Oh, I don't believe it. That was what he meant when he left her. Don't you remember? He said, I never break a promise to a woman. But you. You think so? Of course. Why, he told you not to believe a word, she says. Yes, because he didn't want me to know that he was going. He wanted to spare me the distress. Don't you see? No, and I'm sure you're wrong. The rotting dean. Did you hear that? Rotting Dean. Yes, and we follow. But I promised Percy I'd see you safely back to Blakeney Manor. I'm not going to Blakeney Manor. If that woman can go to Percy, so can I. And my claim comes first. I can't bear any more. Rotting Dean Saunders. Percy will flame me for this. Now, this is my plan. You must bind Lord Hastings and leave him here. Yes. But set the coachman free and chase him along the Rotting Dean Road. I see. So that he can break the news to Sir Percy. Yes, then perhaps they'll come back here for Lord Hastings. And we shall have ample time to get Lady Blake into Shoreham Harbour. Here they come. Our carriage was broken down. Could your coachman give us a lift? and then off to Shoreham Harbour as fast as you can. Very good, sir. We'll meet you at the French ship. Right, sir. Come on, I. And when you get to Paris, remember the main thing is to shift your headquarters after each meeting. See? Yes. So, Percy. Your coachman, sir, he's downstairs. Bad news, I'm afraid, sir. What do you mean? It's a Lady Blakeney, sir. They've taken her away. Oh, good God, man, where is he? In the hall, sir. Come on, quickly. Where have they taken her? To France. They must have reached Shoreham by now. Come on, there's not a moment to be lost. Marguerite? Not a trace. 
This is leaving his mark on Percy. I'd better look at him. I know. It's the first time I've ever seen him frightened. I wish to heaven we could do something to help him. I followed every trail that looked as if it could lead us to Marguerite. It's like looking for a needle in a haystack. It's Hastings. I thought I'd never reach you. The place is crawling with spies. Any news? No, have you? Where's Percy? I don't know. I can guess. Where? Shadowing Master Chauvelin. Uh. Last ladies, last gentlemen, come on, bunch of last ladies, I ain't so one all the morning. Last ladies, last gentlemen, come on, dear bye, bunch of last ladies, I ain't so one all the morning. Last ladies, last gentlemen, come on, dear bye, bunch of last ladies, I ain't so one all the morning. Last with the pretty ladies, isn't it? Come now, isn't she worth it? All right, give me those. Lovely bunch of lilies with the best. Hey. Well, what are you looking for? The Scarlet Pimpernel. You think he's already here? You may be sure of it. Will you take the trout, citizen colonel? Hmm? What do you say? Uh, the grilled trout. Oh, yeah, it's all right. Just half a bottle. Oh, and I, I think I'll have some grilled trout. Uh, very good, citizen colonel. Yeah. Good day, senorita. Good day, citizen Chauvelin. Good day. I have your table ready. This way, if you please. Thank you. It is delicious weather, is it not? Yes. If I may say so, what a charming nosegay. Ah, the aroma is only comparable to the beauty of the senorita herself. Oh. Here we are. Thank this is your table, citizen Chauvelin. When we have important executions, this is the most popular window in Paris. Yes, 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 but I particularly ask for a table away from the others. I am sorry. But the citizen colonel always has this table reserved for him when he is home on leave. He likes to see the heads pop into the basket. Oh, you know him, do you? Oh, Colonel Fontaine. I've known him for years. He is quite deaf, senorita. The heavy artillery in Spain. That is what has made him so deaf. Quite deaf, citizen Chauvelin. Yes, yes, I dare say, but I expect my instructions to be carried out. But the citizen saved the table by the window. Fine woman, that. Widow, did he say? Uh, no, Citizen Colonel. Window. Well, that's what I said, curse you. You deaf? This is all very delightful, but I still don't know why you invited me. You handled the Blakeney affair brilliantly. Is Robespierre satisfied? Yes, he wants you to proceed with it. To proceed? But didn't you say if I handled this affair successfully, I and my friends will be safe forever? I see. Nowadays in France, forever means, say, three weeks. Oh, don't exaggerate. Say two. And what I said was, if you help me in the capture of the Pimpernel. The Pimpernel isn't captured yet. Well, what else can I do? You know he's in Paris and you have hundreds of agents. Yes, but they don't know Blakeney and you do. Would you recognize him in a disguise? I think I should. Then be at the tribunal tomorrow afternoon at five o'clock. One of my agents will sit near you. If you recognize him, point him out. Should Sir Percy be there? It isn't the trial of... Exactly. Lady Blakeney. How can you expect me to watch that poor woman fighting for her life? What harm has Lady Blakely ever done to me? You expect me to make use of her agony to catch her husband? When I first suggested the scheme, you didn't seem so squeamish. I didn't know her then. I didn't know that he was the man he is. Oh. So you liked him? Yes, I did. Would it surprise you to hear that I like him too? Then why Because it's his neck or mine, and quite possibly yours. Robespierre's awaiting results. If we succeed in trapping Blakeney, well and good. If we don't... Look at them. All people we know, that we've met. Is it very difficult for you to imagine that I am one of them? That you are one? That Talian is one? That's why I invited you to have lunch with me. Here. Yes, I... I suppose you're right. Where is she now? In the central prison. And at five o'clock tomorrow afternoon, she'll be brought to the Revolutionary Tribunal. That baits the trap. Soon, her elusive spouse will come sniffing around. And then we'll have him. Just like a little mouse. Spouse. Mouse. That's a rhyme. 
I must have caught it from that damned elusive pimpano. Let me see what I can do with it. Uh, excuse me, citizeness. Uh, may I crave the loan of your pencil for a moment, citizen? Uh, certainly, citizen colonel. It was presented to me by citizen Robespierre, so don't lose it. Well, whose is it? Yours, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, that's what I said. Yes, I thought so. Thanks very much. I wonder what he wants it for. Not verses, certainly. Well, he scarcely wants an idea of a poet. <laughs> scarcely. Even without his uniform, one could never mistake him for anything but what he is. There he comes. Oh. Thank you, citizen. Thank you. Yeah. Citizeness? Yeah. Good day, citizen. Um, that uh, disappointed looking fellow with a pretty widow. Oh, the citizen Chauvelin. What? The citizen Chauvelin. Yes, I expect so. Well, give him this, will you? What? Not to the lady, citizen colonel? Huh? The lady. Oh, ha. I wish it were. Uh -huh. yeah. Can't afford these expensive sweets. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, might as well give him my bill with it. Your bill? Yeah. I seem to know your face. Huh? Oh, yes, I know the place. Quite good. Chief? Yes, it must have been. I thought I knew you. I'll, I'll tell him. Yes. Good day, Colonel. Good day. Excuse me. The citizen colonel asked me to give you this. With his bill. With his bill? Yes, citizen Chauvelin. You seek him here, you seek him there. And you're suddenly unaware. He's at your elbow, lunching well. That damned elusive pimpernel. Why can't you look where you're going? Did the citizen colonel forget something? Hate something? Of course I haven't. I've only just come. Look at my table by the window. What's the matter with him? He looks ill. Ah! Oh. Known him for years, have you? The guillotine for your memory. Found her? Yes. Well done, Vasily. Well done. Don't rejoice too soon. Our friend Chauvelin knows that I know everything. Where is she? In the central prison. She goes for her trial tomorrow afternoon. I have an idea. We'll rescue her on the way there. No. On the way back. The chances will be better then. With night coming on. You all know what the odds are. We're with Don't you, Percy. To the last man. Andrew? Yes? Andrew, I'm... Right. And get a plan of the court and find out which entrances the prisoners are taken to and from. Oh, and you, Hastings, to the prison. Find out what you can about the drivers of the prison carriages. Right. And Harry? Yes? I want you to get up first thing in the morning and wait for us at the tavern of the Black Cat at Barbizon. The landlord there is in our pay, and that's to be the rallying point after the rescue. Is that all? That's all. Come on. Well, that's all I heard. The Black Cat at Babazon. Do you know the place? Very well. Look here. It's about 15 miles from Paris. The landlord's been under suspicion for a long time. Have it surrounded. Why so far afield? We can get them as they come out. In a crowd, half of which is hostile to the government already? Do you want to have a fight in the center of Paris? What are your orders, I've told you. Surround the black cat. Let them think that they've succeeded, that they're safe. They'll come straight into your arms. 
Well, it might work. It must. Have all the roads closed except the road to Barbizon. Very good. And keep clear of the Palais de Justice. Guilty. Sentence death. Next case. What is the charge? Treason. Would it be true to say that you were at one time an enthusiastic supporter of the revolution? Yes, because I was bitterly opposed to the enslavement of the people. Then why have you been attacking our present system of government? Because I am bitterly opposed to the enslavement of the people. <laughs> Silence! Then you consider the principles laid down by citizen Robespierre entail a new form of slavery? Yes. Don't you? Don't trifle with me. This is a court of justice. Is it? And I'll trouble you not to show contempt of court. I'm sorry. I was endeavouring to conceal it. <laughs> Silence! Impertinence won't help your case. Citizens of the jury, it seems to me the prisoner is convicted out of his own mouth on every count of the indictment. What is your verdict? Guilty. Sentence death. Case, next case. Marguerite Saint Just, known as Lady Blakeney. What is the charge? Escaping just execution at the hands of the Republic. Well, how is that? With your permission, I think I can explain. Proceed, Citizen Chauvelin. The citizeness escaped with the aid of an enemy subject whom she subsequently married, an English aristocrat known as the Scarlet Pimpernel. And what is a Scarlet Pimpernel, Citizen oh. Chauvelin? <laughs> One might describe it as a demmed, intrusive weed, citizen judge. Actually, it's a small wayside flower which has been adopted as the emblem of Sir Percy Blakeney and a gang of associates who've sworn enmity to the Republic. It is an axiom among gardeners, I believe, citizen Chauvelin, that a weed should be plucked and destroyed. Precisely. I've handed to the public prosecutor a list of those whom this Englishman has spirited away. May I see the list? Certainly, citizen judge. Citizen Judge, I should like to express the modest hope that I may shortly have the privilege of placing this English milord before you. I should be the first to congratulate you. You do not deny what Citizen Chauvelin says? Deny what? That I am the wife of Sir Percy Blakeney? Your public prosecutor didn't bring any charge against me. And the Minister of Police just told you a fairy tale about my husband. Do you deny that all these enemies of the Republic were rescued from their just punishment by your husband? who is known as the Scarlet Pimpernel? I do. Then who spirited them away? I did. You? Why should my husband do these things? He is an Englishman. And I am a Frenchwoman. And I love France. That is why I robbed the guillotine of French heads and the gutter of French blood. This can't be true, Citizen Chauvelin. Not one word, Citizen Judge. Lady Blakeney, you think your husband cannot be convicted if you yourself are sentenced for his misdeeds. You're wrong. You brought me here because you want to capture my husband. I shall. You never will. I hope my message from this court will reach him. It is that I implore him not to risk his life in trying to rescue me. <laughs> silence! Silence! 
This is a court of justice, not an opera house. If these proceedings are held up by any more of these ridiculous interruptions, I will have the court cleared and any suspects arrested. Is the counsel for the defense anything to say? The accused has confessed. Prosecution? I claim the one penalty. Jury, what is your verdict? Guilty. Sentence death. <laughs> You, Marguerite? I'm not sure, Harry. I, I think so. I'll believe it when she's safely in England. <laughs> How's it gone? Too well. Nobody questioned us as we changed carriages. We got out of Paris far too easily. I don't like it. Is everything ready here? Yes, I've arranged night quarters for everyone. No, I don't wait. We must have dinner and then press on. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, a toast before we go. To Marguerite. The sweetest flower in the fair land of France. Marguerite! Marguerite! <laughs> Sir Percy, may I propose a toast? Please do. It's just two words. They mean the same thing, and they are both very dear in our hearts. To England and to freedom. And may they never be apart. To England and to freedom. And may they never be apart. One favor more. A verse of the elusive Pimpernel. From the poet's own lips. Yes, Percy. Go on, Shakespeare. Don't be a <laughs> Oh, well, all right. They seek him here. They seek him there. Those Frenchies seek him everywhere. Is he in heaven? Or is he in hell? That not-so-elusive Pimpernel. And if I may continue, I have a sequel which may not be inappropriate. It's entitled The Spouse and the mouse by Andre Chauvelin, citizen with deepest apologies to Sir Percy Blakeney, Baron. I set a trap as bait a bell. His pretty spouse I grieve to tell, but I never dreamed that I should trap the spouse, the mouse, and the gang as well. And now, my dear Sir Percy, the game's up. Stay where you are. Or the world will lose a poet. That was sheer poetry, my dear Chauvelin. In comparison, my own efforts are the merest doggerel. <laughs> One might almost say mongrel doggerel. Stay where you are. Come, Andrew. Wine for citizen Chauvelin. I would remind you, Sir Percy, I am not alone. Oh, I humbly crave your pardon, citizen. Any friends of yours are friends of mine. Landlord. Wine for the army of France. Yes, but first you'd better uh, lay down that little pistol. Which threatens the life that you value most in the world. As my 50 muskets threaten the life you value most. Lady Blakeney's. How well we know one another. Perhaps in the circumstances it would be better if my wife withdrew. You want to capture me, not my wife. And you'll know how quick I can be with this. All right. She can go if, if you'll hand that over to me. It's a bargain. Go, darling. Andrew, take her out. 
Must I? Go at once, darling. Please. Andrew, call out as you drive off. I will. Now, as soon as they're safely off. By the way, I must compliment you on your new technique. Eh? Yes. When we were on our guard and ready to fight, you let us escape. And as soon as we thought we were safe, you pounced. Brilliant, my dear Chauvelin. Elementary, my dear Blakeney. Hello there, we're up! We're up! Your pistol, Sir Percy. And now, Sir Percy. And now, Citizen Chauvelin, I acknowledge you master of craft. The best man always wins. <laughs> road did you take? Cully. But I'm certain Marguerite and Andrew didn't go that way. Well, I've sent men to watch the ports. We'll just have to wait. I'm sure Andrew will bring her through. It's Andrew. Percy, forgive me. What's happened to her? Andrew, for God's sake. They've got her. Headed us off. Shot my horse. He's wounded. I'll take care of him. Oh, Percy, I'm so sorry. You did everything you could. I know, Andrew. Last card. Heaven save me from such bunglers. The Pimpernel walks into your arms with all his men, and you fail again. My scheme went wrong, I admit, but through no fault of mine. Whose then? You were in charge. But no man can ensure success when he's served by fools. Precisely. That's why I contemplate having you removed from office. But my plan was right. Using the wife to trap the husband. Yes. Have you trapped the husband? No, but I've recaptured the woman. And the next time... There'll be no next time. I've ordered her execution. Give me one more chance. Postpone it for one week. Not for one hour. With prisoners escaping right and left, an example must be made. And unless you do very much better, very, very much better, citizen Chauvelin, another example will probably follow. What is it? I've copied these names, Citizen Walsh. Wait. I haven't finished with you yet. Here is a list containing the names of certain members of the Convention whom I've decided to eliminate from our councils. You will ensure that all of them attend the sitting tomorrow. You will collaborate with the police department who will see that no member leaves the building once he has entered it. Above all, you will see that Citizen Talia attends the sitting. Understand? Perfectly. Well, try and not bungle this.
I don't trust that man. If it comes to that, I trust no one. Not even me, Citizen Robespierre? Oh, yes. You, de Calme. Percy, de Calme is here. Let him in. Percy, are you mad? Let him in. Thank goodness you could come. Gentlemen, this is the bravest member of our League. If we've risked our lives a score of times, he's risked his a thousand. Forgive our doubts, monsieur. We respect you all the more as a Frenchman and a member of our League. He joined us because he is a Frenchman. Because he loves France and hates the tyrant. Where is my wife? Central prison. It's no good softening the blow, Blakeney. When are they? Chauvelin tried his utmost to get the execution postponed. But Robespierre insists it should be tomorrow. Tomorrow? At midday, Robespierre means it. Of course, it's madness. But the man is mad, I'm convinced of that. About this new purge of the Convention? Tomorrow morning. Did you get the list? Yes. Good. I have it here. Talians is the first name. Talia. That's our man. What's your plan, Percy? I can save my wife only if we save France. For I love France. And I love the loveliest of all French women, my wife, more than anything else in the world. The senorita in? Yes, citizen Chauvelin. It's all right. Wonderful. You look just like my dead brother. Yeah, I feel like it. Here you are. Thank you, Sir Percy. Uh, Robespierre was inquiring whether you had justified my faith in you. I hope you said I had. I did my best to pacify him. You know how exacting he is. He's never satisfied even with his most enthusiastic supporters. Oh, and by the way, he didn't seem to think that the brilliant young Talian was one of them. Oh, but he is. But I, I'm his most loyal adherent. Why, of course you are, my dear fellow. And at tomorrow's meeting of the convention, you'll have the opportunity to show it. Between ourselves, uh, I know he would regard your absence as a proof of enmity. Oh, that's ridiculous. Isn't it? But that's Robespierre. Au revoir, citizen Talian. Senorita, your devoted slave. Look out, you clumsy idiot! Can't you look what you're doing? this time. Oh, I have no passport. Oh, I knew this would happen. Where can we turn? Nowhere. We're rats in a trap. There's only one man in the world who's ever snatched a victim from Robespierre. And I've lied to him and cheated him. Who's that? The Scarlet Pimpernel. At your service, senorita. Sink me, senorita. I hardly recognize myself. I hope you'll forgive my somewhat informal garb, but I've been cleaning your windows to enable you to take a clear view of things. I take a very clear view of your presence here, and I know what to do about it. Don't trouble to give the alarm. It won't save you. From what? The guillotine. Neither you nor the senorita. 
But, Percy, why did you come here? To save you. But you're not our friend. You can't be. I don't pretend to be. Well, I, I don't want to have anything to do with you. I shan't denounce you, but... Please go. If I go, how are you to escape? You can't. Every road is closed to you and every port is watched. You're sentenced to death and you feel it, don't you? Don't you? But how can we believe you? Why should you want to save us? I want to save my wife. How? By saving France from terror and tyranny. But I don't see how that affects me. Here is Robespierre's list for the meeting of tomorrow. Your name is the first. Are you going to take your death blow like an ox or stand up and fight like a He's man? That's right, you must fight. It's your life and mine. And I'll be there, Jean, to watch you. But will the others follow me? Here are 20 desperate supporters, every man of them condemned to death. Every man fighting for his life. They'll follow you. Give them a lead and you'll have 40 more behind you. The country's sick of assassination, longing for liberty, looking for new leaders. Aren't you a Frenchman? Does it mean nothing to you to become the savior of France? Call them together. There's not a moment to be lost. Will he go through with it? He shall. Good. You are his courage. If he weakens, strengthen him. And whatever happens, be there when the convention opens. They'll never get him. They'll get him now, all right. Don't you worry. I saw him once. Did you? Yes, disguised as a horse. <laughs> I wish he'd come my way. Why, what would you do? Kiss him on both cheeks. <laughs> Modern methods of detection, my friend. That's the only way we'll get him. By now, everyone in Paris knows his disguises. Yes, and he knows they know. Now, that won't help him much. So long as he had only your police to contend with, he was safe. But now I've mobilized the people for the hunt. Have you posted your men outside the convention? They're on the way now. And the arrangement for Lady Blake and his execution? Yes, she leaves the prison at midday. Colonel Leblanc, very good. Got the English woman now? Yes. Twelve the clock also. You oughtn't to go without your food, you know. They'll be coming for you at 12. Do you want a hairdresser? No, thank you. Just as you like. But he sent it out of the way. On the back of your neck, you know. I can arrange that. May I see a priest? Yes. We can do that for you. Check them as they come in. And don't forget Talia. All right. And keep your eye open for the fifth number. to stop you from going to the convention. But I must go to Tully, I must. I'm his courage, you know I am. Exactly. And we both forgot that Robespierre knows that too. Look. There. You'll be arrested as soon as you reach the street. Then we're lost. Not yet. What can I do? Write what I tell you. Write? Write.
Yeah, they are here, just behind us. Poor young Terry. No Theresia, no heart. Soon no head. You've got your men posted in the gallery. They know what to do. Yes, we're all fixed here. What about you? Well, Marguerite will be taken to the guillotine at 12 o'clock. We leave for the prison at 20 minutes to, and I'll meet you there. Right. Whatever happens here, we must save Marguerite. Citizens of the Republic, the ideals of our great revolution are in danger. Enemies of our country hit us in on every side. Every cargo from England contains a poignard for the use of accomplices in Paris. But we will pursue all who dare conspire to ruin the face of France. I come, therefore, to stifle this terrible ferment which inflames this temple of liberty. But Lady Blakeney, I've done my utmost to save you. Robespierre is adamant. I bear you no resentment, Citizen Chauvelin. That only adds to my distress. There is just one possibility of saving you yet. How? If you will write an appeal to your husband to come forward, I'll have it circulated through Paris. The moment he gives himself up, you will be freed. So that he may take my place at the guillotine? Don't be hasty. I can guarantee you a free pardon. No. No. Then I'm afraid this is the end. Gayla, I'll hold you personally responsible for this prisoner. Should I be required, I shall be upstairs with the governor. Very good. It is these conspirators who have precipitated us into those violent measures which their crimes alone have made necessary. There is in existence a criminal group which intrigues in the very bosom of the convention. Twenty members of this assembly have so plotted. What shall be done then to remedy this evil? Our duty, punish the traitors, purge the convention, crush all factions under the weight of national authority. I therefore demand the lives of those members of the convention who have conspired so criminally against the fair land of France. Yeah! 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 I ask for publication of this speech. Yeah! 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 I call upon citizen Bordeaux. I oppose printing. Hear, 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 hear. The discourse contains matters too serious for that. Agree. I suggest that the convention submits it to the committees before printing. Hear, 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 hear. I call upon citizen Beal. Agree. I demand submission of the discourse to the committees. Come on, Hannah, speak now. Now! I call upon Citizen Terrier. I insist on the adjournment for the consideration of the discourse. It contains principles which require examination and reflection of the committees. What? I have the courage to submit truths which I think necessary for the health of the country, and you want to see my discourse examined by those very members whom I accuse? When one boasts of having the virtue of courage, one should have that of truth also. Name those whom you accuse. Yes. Hey, 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 hey. I ask for silence! Silence! That I may confront this tyrant who has dared to compose a list of representatives with the intention of sending them to their death. I have seen the army of the new Cromwell, and I have come armed with a dagger 
to plunge into his bosom in case the convention has not the courage to demand his arrest. <laughs> Prisoners for 12 o'clock. Prisoners for 12 o'clock. Prisoners for 12 o'clock. Prisoners for 12 o'clock. Prisoner Blakeney. I'm ready. Special order of Citizen Robespierre. Special order of Citizen Robespierre. I can't let you take her away without advising the governor. You better wait here. without you, sweetheart. But you can't save me. I'm not afraid of death, if you're safe. But I am safe. Didn't you hear? Special order of Citizen Robespierre. He wants to see us. Percy, don't joke. You know there's no hope. There's always hope. Come on, darling. Well done, O'Brien. Good luck, Percy. An officer brought this special order regarding the prisoner, Margaret Blakeney. What's that? Where is he? I left him in her cell. What? Fool! Fool! Well, well. Old friends meet again. You have never been more welcome. But really, Sir Percy, this is scarcely up to your level. Did you expect for one moment that anyone would believe that Robespierre would issue such an order? Don't you believe Robespierre capable of a single human weakness? Well, uh, his, uh, his position doesn't allow it. Yes, I know. He's never been very fair to you, has he? I never said that. No, but um, between friends, you don't like him much, do you? Has he? Don't try and fasten things on me. I, I protest. But why? These gentlemen are all of the same opinion. They don't like him either. Do you, gentlemen? That alone is enough to send you to the guillotine. But I'm already there. So you see, I'm in a position to say what you're only thinking. Come, gentlemen, let me give you a lead. Down with Robespierre. It is time that France breathes again. And in the name of liberty, equality, and fraternity, I demand the arrest of Robespierre. Down with Robespierre. <laughs> Sir Percy, the best of friends must part. You can say goodbye to Lady Blakeney. I'm afraid the game's up. Is it? Is it? I believe it is. Break up the prison! Chief of 
police. I claim him. I? Who are you? A pretty portrait you plastered Paris with. Not a soul recognized what? me. Blank man? Yes. The Scarlet Pimpernel? Yes. I want Chauvelin. He and I have a little account to settle. <laughs> What are you going to do with me? Take you to England, my friend, and give you a change of view. You mean you're not going to take your revenge? That is for my wife to say. What punishment do you think Mr. Chauvelin should have, my dear? A slow, lingering torture, do you think? Yes, darling. You could teach him to play cricket. <laughs> darling, you're wonderful. <laughs> Percy, he's looking. Oh, what do we care? 